Today on Monkey Life. Alison's in mid Wales to collect a number of primates from a zoo whose license to keep wild animals has been revoked. It'll either go probably really easy or really difficult, so just have to wait and see. Here, my butters. But it's the presence of Jeremy that makes all the difference. The thought of Jeremy walking into a room with them is enough just to make them leave immediately. And a feast of melons for the bachelor chimps. Monkey World in Dorset, very deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr. Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. I'm shocked. This animal is living in fear of its life at all times. The park provides a home for more than 260 primates from 24 different species. Two hundred miles from Dorset, on the west coast of Mid Wales, Alison and Jeremy are at Both Zoo on a rescue mission. They're here to collect five primates needing to be rehomed. Two patus monkeys and two capuchin monkeys are destined for Monkey World, while a vervet monkey is to be rehomed at a rescue centre in Berkshire. It's early morning, and Jeremy and Alan are unloading the travel boxes. It's going to be a busy day today. We've got to try and get the five monkeys into the boxes. Um, so we're just getting all of the kit unloaded and set up, um, all ready to go. We'll try and do the patas first of all, because I think they're going to be most tricky. Um, and we'll see how we go from there. It's really sort of hard to predict. It'll either go probably really easy or really difficult. So just have to wait and see, but um, the animals are inside their houses and sort of ready to go. A number of serious issues have forced the owners of Borth Zoo, Tracy and Dean Tweedy, to find homes for their larger animals and primates. You just go just under the... Under that beam, under that beam yeah. Alison yeah. wants to start with the patus monkeys. They're the largest and potentially most unpredictable to persuade into the crates. The pair, a male and female, have been secured in their bedroom while the team manoeuvre the first of the travel boxes for the male, named Mr. Patus. If we end up with both of them in the tunnel, and him in the box and her in the tunnel, then we put the other door in and contain her in the tunnel while we swap the boxes. That sounded quite good, didn't it? It does. It is a plan. It sounded like I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> Jeremy has enlisted the help of both headkeeper Charlotte, who the Patus pair know and trust. She's going to use fruit to try to entice them into their boxes. A friendly face, some soothing words, and Mr. Patus responds. She's in. <laughs> Before long, he's secured in his crate. Oh, safe? Excellent. Nice job, thank you. It's a great start to the day. Good boy. Yeah, that was really calm. Quite happy with that. With Mr. Patter safely in his box, it's time to try and entice his mate, Lady Penelope, into hers. Hopefully she'll walk in as well as he did, so. This would be fantastic. It's certainly a very good start to the day that we've got him in calmly and nicely, and he's quite chilled out in the box, so fingers crossed. Come on, butters. Once again, Charlotte tries to woo her in. Come on, darling. Come on, sweetie. But having seen her mate boxed up, she's a little more wary. Jeremy thinks a bit of coercion might help and pops his head around the bedroom door. It's all it takes. The unfamiliar face behind her prompts Lady Penelope forward and into her travel crate. Good girl. Good girl. 
tails in. Ready? Yeah, we're done. Yeah, all done. Good Could use a padlock. Yeah. Good girl. The thought of Jeremy walking into a room with them is enough just to make them leave immediately, so yeah. But everything nice and calm, which is the main thing. Want to make it as least stressful for them as it's possible, so. Right, two down, three to go. So far, so good. Things couldn't have gone any better and, most importantly, with very little stress. While the team head off to tackle the two capuchins and the vervet monkey, back at the park in Dorset, it's a busy morning too. The small monkeys team and the maintenance crew are prepping for the new arrivals. They're adapting a number of bedrooms, at the Gwenon house for the Patus, and at the domestic marmoset house for the capuchins, who will be housed there temporarily. It's going to be a long day for all involved. It's been a few weeks since the biggest ape house move in the park's history, when the bachelors swapped homes with Bart's group. The bachelor boys have now settled down and adapted to their new surroundings, both inside the house and outdoors in their new enclosure. Though, for some, the large water feature took a bit of getting used to. The move actually went really smoothly, which was good. Um, they were a bit concerned by the pond. Either they hadn't seen a pond for a long time or they saw the frogs in it or possibly saw the reflections. Uh, Jess especially would spend up to half an hour sitting up here, a lamb coiling at the pond. After a while, the rest of the boys just ignored him and left him to it. You know, Jess is, he's a nice boy, he's not necessarily the sharpest tool in the box. Today, the group are in for a juicy, delicious treat. Colin is putting whole melons all around the enclosure, with more than enough for everyone. We want to make sure that everybody gets one. So obviously the dominance will go steaming in first and they'll grab as many melons as they can. So the more we can spread it out, the more the sort of lower ranking guys can go and get some stuff. It also stops them, if you put them all in the same place, they will fight over it immediately. If we throw it in whole, someone that's it's lower ranking, they can pick it up and they can run with it and they've got a whole melon. Now the bigger guys might get two, they might get three, but not necessarily because once someone's got one, they're gone with it. So it's good to vary it. It's, it's useful to chop it up, but it's also quite important to give them whole food now and again, just because it's more exciting and to, to vary the way that they get the food. Colin does a quick clean out of the pond, while the boys wait expectantly in the tunnel to be let out. Once everything is ready, Paco leads the group into their enclosure. But it's another high-ranker, Mojo, who's first to survey the scene. Before he can take it all in, Wily Seamus, who's further down the rankings, grabs a melon and, after a quick look around for any higher-ups, snaffles a second. The low-rankers are striking lucky this morning. With so many melons to find, Paquito has also bagged a couple, all the while keeping a watchful eye out before heading high to tuck in. The high rankers are on the move. Buxom eats his melon on the go, scouting for more. While Paco takes his to a favoured spot, high on the climbing frame. The group's former alpha male, Butch, is also enjoying breakfast. He's 38 and one of the older chimpanzees at the park. He may not be in charge anymore, but he's still highly respected by the others. Jester still has an issue with the pond. His alarm calling attracts Mojo, who offers the agitated chimp a reassuring hand to calm him down. The group are certainly a lot more relaxed since the house swap. The tension and minor squabbles have all but vanished, and they seem a lot calmer with each other. But chimps are volatile, and although it's all peace and friendship at the moment, there's still the chance of occasional squabbles ahead.
back at Borth Zoo on the west coast of Mid Wales, Alison and Jeremy are making good progress persuading the five primates into their individual travel crates. So far, the two patas monkeys are safe and secure, ready for the long trip back to Dorset. The team now need to entice Jangles, a vervet monkey who's going to be rehomed at a rescue centre in Berkshire, into his travel box. He's already been isolated in an outside tunnel, and curiosity, plus a few treats, soon gets the job done. Got him. Yeah, he's eating some banana already. He's grumbling, but he's eating banana, so it can't be too bad. Three down, just two to go. Cappies. Yep. Oh. Okay, you good? Are we ready to rock? Grab a, I'll go grab a box. The final pair are the two capuchin monkeys, Matty and Louie. They've been shut in their bedroom, while Jeremy and Alan secure the travel box to the outside tunnel. Uh, we're good. There's yeah, ha really happy with that. No problem. At first, they're not keen on leaving the bedroom, but once again, Jeremy intervenes. Here you go, boys. Good boy. Matty doesn't hang around to see what he wants, and seconds later is in the crate. In less than an hour, the team have secured four of the five monkeys. Now there's just one left, Matty's mate Louie. After a bit of hesitation, he accepts the inevitable and makes his way into the crate. Yay, rock and roll team. Good job. It's been a textbook operation by the team, securing all five primates. There you go. Really good. So, uh, Maddie, the feisty weeper, is shouting down the houses and is going to let everybody know. Louis, who's the black cap, is just a very quiet, gentle soul and is sitting there quietly taking grapes and eating them. So hopefully Maddie will calm down in a minute, but he's throwing a temper tantrum. Excellent. Excellent job, see? So that's it, five down and pretty good time. But just over an hour, I think, so. Good effort. Now we just need to get down the road. With the monkeys safe in their boxes, the next job is to make sure they've settled down before loading them into the van. Good boy. That's a nice monkey. Excellent job. It's a long journey back to Dorset, and Alison wants to keep their stress levels to an absolute minimum. Everyone is making sure the primates are fed and watered before they leave. For owners Tracy and Dean, and many of the staff who work at Borth, it's sad to see the monkeys leave. <laughs> Good boy, Maddie. <laughs> Good boy. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Oh, plenty of messages along the way. Excellent. And Thank when you. we're there and unloaded. All right? Thank you. You stay strong. Look yeah. after yourselves. Thank you. Ladies, good to see you. Nice to meet you all. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Oh, yeah. Thanks a lot. Stay strong, you guys. All right. There's a 200-mile journey ahead for the primate passengers. But their arrival is eagerly anticipated in Dorset, where their new carers are waiting. The sunshine brings an opportunity for the primate care teams to try a different kind of enrichment to enhance the lives of their charges. At the spider monkey enclosure, the three housemates are waiting patiently in the outside tunnels, while keeper Rachel puts a plan in place to keep the trio cool and at the same time get them moving and active. Today we've got um, some housing enrichment. Uh, one of uh, Jarno and the orangutan team's inventions. Um, so we have little pockets in them, and the hose is folded in on itself uh, with these little flaps that come through here, like a bottom of the pocket. <laughs> so you can basically you can put food in each of these pockets, um, and they will have to climb to get to it, spin it round to work out which pocket they're using, um, and it just encourages a bit of dexterity and climbing behaviour. 
This morning's prize is a cool, thirst-quenching breakfast of frozen satsumas. As well as the hose, Rachel is using some deflated basketballs to hide the fruit. Keeping the unusual feeders steady to free up the food will be a test of the spider monkey's patience and agility. Hey, hey guys! The small troop are let out, with Hickory leading the way, followed by Pumpkin, who makes a beeline for the basketballs. Flint brings up the rear, stretching out his long arms and using his tail to hold on as he inspects the new feeders. The old man of the group, Hickory, isn't as food orientated and bites his time. It's female Pumpkin who's in charge of the small troop. She absolutely loves her food and cracks the challenge with ease. She uses her prehensile tail as a fifth limb for balance as she expertly examines both feeding options. Flint is trying an altogether different technique, perching on a tree stump to reach out and grab one of the hose feeders. He hasn't managed to retrieve the fruit yet, but he's not giving up. Spider monkeys are perfectly adapted for climbing, with disproportionately long legs and arms. They can also grip on tightly with their hands and feet. In the wild, they forage high up in the canopies of the tropical forests of Central and South America. Their amazing prehensile tails are highly effective anchors at height. It's got a nice fleshy pad on the underside which protects it from thorns in the forest on like branches. So in this enclosure, we've got trees, we've got hosing, we've got all sorts of things from the clamber around on. And the idea is to put enrichment up in places that they have to climb to get to it. Pumpkin's given a perfect demonstration of how well equipped spider monkeys are for their environment. But Rachel is keen to ensure that Hickory and Flint don't miss out. Flint! Come here. Good boy, well done everybody. <laughs> Since their arrival almost nine years ago, the team have been training the three spider monkeys in various behaviours so they can regularly check their health and welfare. One element of this is cooperative feeding. We have these little feeding sessions where um, we get them all to sit together like this and we can hand out the food cooperatively. It just means that we know that Hickory is getting his fair share of food in between the main feeds. You know, they, they're quite happy to come and sit and take food from us and, you know, let us do medical inspections and all the rest of it. So, yeah, they've, they've come a long, a long way since they first arrived. Well done, Flint. Good boys. Oh, yes. <laughs> happy noises. At the Gwenon house, the primate care staff are all prepared for the newcomers. Alison has just phoned to say she'll be arriving shortly with the two capuchins and two patus monkeys she's collected from Borth Zoo in Mid Wales. The team are hoping the patus monkeys will be able to live in harmony with the park's family of four red-bellied Gwenons. But it's not a done deal. With the Gwenons, they are quite a tight family unit, so there's probably going to be at least a bit of posturing between the two groups, and we'll have to see if it sort of settles down, if it simmers down. You know, we're going to sort of try it out. If we can make it work, it'll be a really nice sort of mixed species exhibit. Um, but yeah, we're just going to have to see what they make of each other. After a five hour, 200 mile journey, including dropping off the vervet monkey, Alison has arrived and is preparing to unload the park's latest additions. Oh, all good, all good. How are you doing, little man? Are you still angry? It's been a long, hot couple of days, and the team want to get the four primates into their bedrooms and settled as quickly as possible. The two Patas are first. Mr. Patas is lovely. He is? He's just sweet and gentle and charming. Oh, good. Yeah. Some bedrooms in the Gwenon house have been specially adapted for the pair. The two species will be able to see and hear each other, but without any close contact. It's nothing new for the Gwenons. They previously lived with Mitsa, a female patas monkey, and George, an aging ring-tailed lemur, before, sadly, both passed away. 
it doesn't take long to get the new arrivals out of their travel boxes. Look really good, both of them nervous, which is fair. Not only um, have they come out of the boxes to see us who put them in there in the first place, but then they've got neighbors now. So he's very interested in potentially protective and he's ready to go steaming through to the Gwenon. So there you go, that's him. It, 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 if they're going to stay here, they have to get on with the Gwenons, but I'm not sure if they're going to, so that we'll have to wait and see. The pair will be given time before any decision is made. Is he grab me through that? Yeah. Next, the two new Capuchins, Matty and Louis, are loaded up, ready to be taken to their temporary home at the Marmoset Domestic House. Matty is a weeper, so we don't have any weepers, Capuchins here at the park at the moment. Um, and Louis is a black cat, which we do have. Um, the way that they communicate is slightly differently, so that will affect who we decide to put them in with. Um, they're both a little bit on the skinny side as well, so it'd be nice to build them up a little bit. Um, Matty is very long, so I think once we get a bit of weight on him, he's going to be a big boy. Um, so, yeah, we're going to have to think very carefully about where we try to put them. Um, but, yeah, really excited to get going. The pair go straight into their new home without any issues or stress. But it'll be a while before they can meet any of the park's other capuchins. Looking good. Um, they need to be in here to quarantine effectively. We need to make sure that they aren't carrying parasites um, to get health checks done on them because they are quite skinny. We know that Louis has some eating issues and both boys need vasectomies before they can go join their groups. The hard work is just beginning and there's a long road ahead for the park's four new primates. But hopefully they all have a wonderful future ahead of them. Next time on Monkey Life. Concern grows at the park as the effects of the global pandemic continue to bite, meaning everyone has to muck in, as staff are forced to isolate. There's this overwhelming cloud over me right now. I'm worried that we're going to have to close again. And the Gwenon girls show off their amazing agility.